Hey everyone, Evan here from Permission to Game, and I'm here because it's been seven years since we, anyone's really given us anything new in the console world. I mean, I know Nintendo has released the Switch, the Switch Lite, but when it comes to the big game players, you know, Microsoft, Xbox, PlayStation, we haven't seen anything new in seven years, so the new stuff's on its way. And I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't actually go run out there and buy it. But before you do that, make sure you subscribe because without you, this channel doesn't exist. Hit that notification bell, subscribe to our community now. You'll be updated with more great videos from Permission to Game, Double Feature, Parental Composure, all sorts of great stuff. And on your phone, you can even set it up so that you receive those notifications when you want to. It's really cool. Again, hit that bell, subscribe, comment below, tell us how we're doing, and let's get on to today's video. So, the cool part is, you know, it really has been seven years since we've gotten some pretty cool consoles. We have the Xbox One, the PlayStation 5, the Switch, which right now is ultimately my favorite console. I am playing this more than anything. I'm excited for the new stuff coming out. I used to be a diehard PlayStation fan. I recently, you know, I've gone back to the Xbox world because of kids and making it easier for kids to play. You know, and that's why I got the Switch to start with and that's why my kids don't ever actually play it anymore. But the cool part is, why in the world should we actually buy the new stuff? Now, don't get me wrong, the iterations are great, the technology is going to be amazing, but really you should be buying what we have now, the Xbox One, especially the One X, and the PlayStation 4 Pro. Here's your reasons why you should do it. The biggest thing is cost savings. I mean, right now, all of the major manufacturers are throwing big deals out on all of their stuff trying to get you to scoop up every last bit possible. If you're looking for that new console and you're looking for a reason to get into game and you haven't had one yet, why get the new one? Why get the X or the PS5 when it comes out? You know, because it's going to be six, seven, maybe eight hundred dollars depending on the capabilities. I know that Microsoft is going to make two versions. We're going to have a cheaper version. We're going to have a more expensive version. Right now, you know, when it comes to the first title relaunches, every single manufacturer always runs into issues with those, in, those launch edition consoles. The Switch had big problems with battery life, with, what was it, with the drift, with the left Joy-Con not connecting to the system after a certain period of time. They had to make revisions and updates. And they finally came out with a V2, and it works phenomenally better. Now, they still haven't addressed the Joy-Con issue, but... We can still deal with a lot of other, a lot of that stuff because the console itself is improved. Xbox, same price, same problem essentially. The Xbox One initially released forced you to get a bunch of different features and subscriptions. Was way too expensive, and honestly, was extremely laughed at by the gaming community. Now the diehards and the purists they bought it because it was a great console, but it forced Xbox to think about it again, to redo it, and come out with which they normally do a slim version, but a whole lot sooner. You know, when they released the S and then eventually the X, we had truly the Xbox that we wanted from the first place. So when the new one comes out, when the Series X comes out, as cool as it looks, in my opinion, you know, it's going to have problems. You're going to spend a ton of money on a console that's going to do some pretty cool things, but it's going to create a headache for yourself. As soon as they figure out all the issues, as soon as the, the critics have a chance to kind of rip through it and let... Xbox, blah, 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 Xbox essentially know how terrible the system is or is not, you know, then they're going to create the one that you actually wanted in the first place. And it'll give you opportunity just to save money because you know Xbox is going to launch extremely good deals around the holidays, especially after the system has had its initial go. They're going to have deals for it eventually anyways. So right now, whether you're looking on Facebook Marketplace, whether you're going to Best Buy or your local you know, GameStop as they do things, you're going to get a better deal on a current system that is going to be capable for a period of time of playing all the new games than if you just save your money for the, the expensive one that's going to be all the bells and whistles. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm probably still going to buy you know, one of the new consoles when it comes out. But I'm also going to go out there and get myself, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm in the Xbox world right now. I'm going to finally upgrade from the Series S or the Xbox One S, my apologies, to the Xbox One X. Because at this time, it's no longer $500. Now again, Xbox is great at running deals at all times, and they finally have hooked me with the opportunity of getting the One X for $299. So 300 bucks, that's an extremely good deal. So if I sell my current One S, you know, maybe 150, 100 bucks, throw that in on the $300 One X, I've really just upgraded for an extra $200. And I've got a system that is extremely capable. There's tons of reviews and great things about how 
well the One X has been operating and works and plays games. And Microsoft has already said that the current, the current Xbox One, both the S and the X, is going to be capable of playing all of the foreseeable games coming in the future because of how they're engineering the whole X Cloud and the way they're doing all the Game Pass information. So really, by getting the Series X and what we think is going to be the Series S, you're only buying just better hardware. You're not buying access to games that are only available on it. You're, it there's really no reason except for the hype of having the new latest and greatest thing. Now, PlayStation, on the other hand, is changing things up a little bit. We are going to get an amazing PS5. I mean, PlayStation has already been known for having some of the best hardware out there when it comes to consoles. But we don't know a lot yet. They've been keeping it pretty secret. You know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get more information, actually get a look as to what it's going to actually fully in its final form look like. And they're not doing exactly what Xbox is doing. Now, you can get a PS4 and a PS4 Pro for cheap, but they're not offering the same kind of incentives and discounts that Microsoft is with their Xbox. Now, you can still get a PS4 for $299. So for $300, bucks, you can get a base model PS4, which is frankly not the same as buying the Xbox One X. But you can upgrade to the, the PS4 Pro for an additional 100 bucks. It's $399, so $400, again, a little bit more. But if you're a diehard PlayStation fan and you've been waiting for that opportunity to upgrade and you're not sure about the new one yet, it's the perfect time to do it. On top of that, they have tons of great bundles. You know, that's one thing that uh, PlayStation has been really good with, along with their first party titles, is great bundle opportunities to get the games you actually want to play and just Buy it with a system it comes with. So you're saving money on both the game and the system to start with. Um, again, not a lot of huge opportunities if, if you're looking to actually do a hardware upgrade, but PlayStation also has, is doing a lot right now to compete with Microsoft and their Game Pass subscription. They're offering great incentives on, on the individual games themselves, especially if you digitally download them. Um, I know that stores are offering as well a lot of hard copy discounts. You know, just check out again Best Buy, GameStop, Target, things like that. You're gonna find tons of you know kind of clearance items as well. Sony has announced that they are also gonna be including backwards compatibil compatibility with the uh, PS5, but they have not stated anything about whether the new games that are gonna be dedicated to it are also gonna be playable on the PS4. Now, Sony's done a really good job over the years of supporting and keeping their old systems around, and manufacturers and game developers have made games that are playable, but usually it's a playable version that's only for that older system. You can't buy the most current version and play it on all of the other systems. You have to buy the one made for that system. That is the benefit that Xbox is doing, and keeping the fact that the new games that are coming out, like Halo, gonna be amazing, will be playable, according to Xbox, on the Xbox One platform. So if you don't even want to upgrade, you want to save money and turn this video off, literally just stick with what you got. The big thing, the big benefit you're going to have with Microsoft right now in this coming year is going to be their Game Pass. I mean, phenomenal. Right now you can actually sign up for the Ultimate Game Pass for only $1 if you're considering it. I made the leap, did it. it. It's a little bit more every month, but it includes my monthly subscription so that I can make sure I can play online. And I get to access a whole library of video games every single month that's always changing. It's literally like the Netflix of the gaming world when it comes to Microsoft. PlayStation, though they have their own versions of that, not quite as good. And honestly, I don't see the future of PlayStation when it comes to their gaming opportunities being as good as what Microsoft has made possible. You know, the, one of the topics I want to cover in a later video is Microsoft is really changing the way we play games. I mean, they're changing the way we view our consoles and getting rid of the idea that there's a difference between consoles and PCs and Sony versus my, uh, PlayStation and Microsoft. We need to actually take a look at that at some point. Like, what is that? How is that going to affect things going on? How is that going to disrupt the industry? How is that going to force people to rethink about how they produce their games? I mean, Google even tried to get in there and play with Microsoft and go toe to toe with them, and we all know how that went. So, let's get back to what consoles we should buy. Now, if you're if you're still a Switch lover and you really were excited for the Pro that was supposed to come out this year and obviously is not, you still are in luck because there's still special edition consoles coming out. Now, Nintendo is very good at keeping a very tight lip on their product and what's coming up. But if you actually like Nintendo and you want to grab a new console from them, you have, let's say, a launch console and you've been wanting to get an upgrade and you're not sure you wanted the V2 right away, now they've got some, they've got a new one coming out. You can pre-order if you want the, uh, what is it, the 
Animal Crossing's New Horizon. The color scheme on it's amazing. You're gonna be extremely happy with it. It's also the V2, so it's gonna have upgraded battery life, the better CPU, the better processing. Um, and you know, fingers crossed, they're hopefully fixing some of the issues with the Joy-Con drift. But it's gonna be the perfect system for you to grab if you're a Nintendo diehard and been waiting for that upgrade. If you want to go small and you've been looking at, you know, kind of to have two switches essentially, or one that stays at home is dedicated to your dock, or one that's going to be on the go, the new light, they just released the Coral Edition. I'm not sure how I feel. I like the pastel colors, and I really like the, the fact that they've added in a, a fourth option essentially to the Switch Lite. You know, why can't they do these kind of things with the regular Switch? Like, I want to have a fully colored regular Switch. I, atomic Purple, give it to us. We all want it. But instead, we get all the cool stuff on the light that really only attracts the market of people who are looking for a dedicated on-the-go platform. But Nintendo has also been extremely smart about it. And with this, we're essentially replacing the 3DS. If you go to Nintendo's site, now you can get 3DS is still at the store and whatnot that's available on all the leftover stock. But if you go to Nintendo's website, the only other portable system they have is the 2DX, 2DS XL. So you kind of are missing out on, on some of those 3DS capabilities, so might as well get a Switch Lite. It's perfect. Now, if you do like the 2DS XL, they do have a special going on right now for, what, $149? They combine that with Mario Kart 7. It's kind of, you know, Nintendo's MO. They'll give you one of their highest selling, one of their most popular games for free um, just to force you into a new product. But at the end of the day, they don't like to discount anything. So even though you may want to get a new Switch and you're looking for the next thing, you're really only buying it because of what it looks like. You're not going to get any discount whatsoever unless you're able to find it for sale or cheaper on the marketplace, you know, third party. Some of that stuff's got to be a little bit risky, though, so keep in mind warranties may have been voided. You may not know what you're getting into. So keep that all in mind as you're buying outside of the actual manufacturer itself. So not only are we getting cool updates and additions to the video consoles themselves, we're going to get some really cool games and discounts on games as well. Now, I already mentioned that Microsoft loves to put out great new specials every single month through their Game Pass. I mean, literally, once you download it, if it goes away, it's still within your archives. So you, got to, you have that opportunity now to hold on to it. Every single month, new, new games, new opportunities are coming out through Game Pass, along with great savings and discounts throughout all the different you know, different games and offerings through their online kind of purchasing as well. So you can also get right now at this time, they're doing specials up to 75% off on some of our most popular games. You can get the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. You can also get the Doom platforms. You can get the Need for Speed Heat, Planet Fall, Wreck Fest, and Tabs. Those are just a couple out of that list. Again, up to 75% off. Not all of them are. But if you've been waiting for the opportunity to buy some of these games, now is the perfect time because all sorts of deals are going on. With that, if you're looking, if you're a huge anime fan, it is anime month as well, and there's deals up to 80% off on anime as well for the month of February. Um, going into March here, we're gonna have a lot more new uh, kind of specials and whatnot going on, so stay tuned. We're gonna have a video for that as well. PlayStation, on the other hand, they may not discount their consoles the same way. They're great with bundles, but they are really good with discounting their games. And they have a lot of very similar games as well, but they're doing it in kind of, we'll call them picks or sales. They're bundled together with a group of games. Their first bundle that they've got going on right now is the Essential, Pick, Essential Picks Bundle. And again, that's also like Microsoft, up to 70% off. You're gonna save on Jedi Knight Fallen Order as well. Arc, Witcher 3, GTA 5, Need for Speed Heat, you know, The Last of Us, and the list goes on within that bundle. Ton of great games. I mean, Last of Us right there, 15 bucks, amazing game, totally worth picking up for $15. And the cool part is, even it's, it's part of your account going forward. And with what they're saying, the backwards compatibility with the new console, if you choose to get the new one, you can play it, what you purchase now, with the new console as well. So there are benefits to saving up and spending the money. Now, if you're looking at the Switch, you know, like I said, they don't discount at all their consoles. So really, you're just upgrading because you want to. Now, if you're into games, the best platform for indie games is by far the Switch. Super cheap, games as cheap as 99 cents out there, um, along with a lot of games that are basically under 10 bucks. A lot of stuff you can pick up, but the games we're actually interested in are are extremely cheap right now. With the emergence of a lot of new stuff coming out, there's a lot of pre-orders going on. You can pick up the new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. 
Um, that pre-order is going on as well with a free demo that you can play so you can even decide if you like it. It's a ton of fun. I played it the other day. Literally hooked. It's, it's, it's a great way to mix Pokemon with kind of an overworld MMORPG kind of style. Along with that too, we got Doom 64, extremely cheap. I mean, $2.99, classic. We may not get an emulator for the N64 yet within the within eShop, the e but at least there are some N64 games coming out and are available already. So pick that one up for $2.99. I definitely would advise being careful and mindful of where you play, especially if you have kids. It is more of a uh, intense game if you know much about Doom. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of great classic, but definitely keep that in mind on where you play that as well. Super, Mon uh, Super Monkey Ball is 25% off. Tons of fun. I mean, it's one of those great ones you just pick up and it's a mindless waste of time, but it keeps you going. It keeps you addicted because it's actually kind of hard. Hello Neighbor, if you've ever played that, they have two out right now. The first one is also on sale. That one itself is 50% off on the eShop with Nintendo. I've played that. It actually scares me. Like, it's really cool. I love the graphics. It's very much like a paper space, very, very simple, very blocky. But the game itself is hard. Like, I had to watch a lot of tutorials to get through little parts here and there because you really can't figure out things without playing with everything. It's a lot of fun. It'll make you jump because there are points where it's like, what just happened? And yeah, pick it up. That one's worth doing. One game I really wish Nintendo would put on sale, Witcher 3. It is random when it does go on sale, and if you're not paying attention, you miss out. It's still $60. I don't get it. Come on, Nintendo. Everywhere else has it on discount or part of whatever pass that you buy, but not on Nintendo. Blows my mind. It's part of that, what, Nintendo tax that people talk about. So just thrown into Nintendo, your games are more expensive. Thank you. But there are some that are still cool. Now, Ashen, if you haven't played that on the Xbox, Ashen is a great co-op game. You can either play it by yourself or with a friend or friends online. Tons of fun to play. That also is 20% off on the eShop this month as well. Now again, specials are always changing mid-month, beginning of the month. Always keep your eye out there on those, on those different, you know, different eShops within the different platforms. You're going to love it. Grab the Xbox Game Pass if you have an Xbox. If you haven't already, sign up. It's worth it. You're going to love it. And like I said, I'm going to buy the Xbox One X. I'm going to wait for the Series X. I will eventually get it. But right now, it makes more sense to me to play the One X because I've always wanted it. It has the capabilities, it has the hardware, it's a great system already. They're gonna improve upon it, but it's still gonna work effectively for what we need and you're gonna give you access to everything you need within Microsoft's environment. So, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Evan McKenna, this is Permission to Game. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week with another exciting gaming topic. Thank you so much.